Creature in the Well is a pinball or breakout inspired hack and slash dungeon crawler that manages to take a tired trope and inject fresh new life into it. Playing as the last remaining bot C unit, you awaken in the middle of a desert and stumble your way into a town surrounded by a never ending sandstorm, only to find very faint signs of life and a mysterious creature living in the well. Your mission is then to fight through various trapped rooms, harvest energy, and power up the machine in order to save the town from their feet. Contrary to what you may think, this is a fairly linear game with handcrafted engines, so none of that procedurally generated stuff, where the core action, of course, involves hitting pinballs at the various bumpers and enemy turrets. Core to this is a charge move that enables you to increase the force of your shot, charging up the bumpers at a quicker rate, as well as to receive the deadly volleys from certain enemy traps. While you don't necessarily have to explore every room to progress, what is very helpful is the energy nodes that give you a decent chunk of energy, as well as the secret rooms which unlock new weapons, cosmetic capes, and bot cores for upgrades. Speaking of which, the game doesn't really explain all that much other than the basics, so while you can upgrade your bot core, the game doesn't exactly tell you what it does, which can be a little frustrating, since aside from new weapons and the bot core, there isn't really any progression per se. There are 8 dungeons, all helpfully colour coded with completing each area resulting in the powering up of a monolith that activates the corresponding sector of the machine, from the emergency power reserves to the archival module and even the atmospheric analysis bit which would be critical to stopping the raging sandstorm. Each area also has a counter on it, which I believe corresponds to the number of main power nodes that you have activated, making it easy to go back to find any that you missed. Naturally, each area also comes with new mechanics, from flipping switches and moving targets, but the core gameplay does not change up all that much. Some of the most satisfying gameplay moments come from reward rooms, where you are able to fire a whole bunch of projectiles into energy bumpers, and the resulting ricochet and lighting up of the bumpers is just so exciting and so fun to watch. Each area ends in the boss fight against the creature, which is not as scary as it sounds. While the creature does pull the platform you are on down several floors, this basically becomes a distillation of the particular mechanics of that dungeon while the creature peppers you with some projectiles. It's a very classic boss fight design and a nice end cap to each dungeon. In terms of difficulty, I found it to be relatively alright, not really dying at all in the early dungeons, but I did struggle with a particular trap which I would call the Dynamite Tower, which releases a very damaging shockwave when hit. A pretty cool aspect is that certain rooms are designed more like puzzles than combat encounters, such as ones with the aforementioned Dynamite Towers where you actually have to coax the projectiles and fire them in a very controlled manner so as to not accidentally set off these towers. Died to these towers a couple of times since they can take you down in like 2-3 to three hits, but thankfully, the penalty for death is relatively minor, simply throwing you back out into town and having to trudge back to where you were.
Perhaps most annoying of all were the timing-based challenges in which you have to fully charge certain bumpers within a countdown period, failing which the challenge will reset, and I did get stuck on a couple of these. However, I would say that it didn't take me more than 2-3 to three minutes of trial and error to clear each room, but to be more inclusive, the timing windows on these could have been just a tad wider. Overall, Creature in the Well is a very cleverly designed piece of work, from the implementation of the pinball elements mixed with the frenetic action of having to react to damaging projectiles. The art and visual design is just excellent, with some very clever camera angles used to give it quite a dynamic feel. The world and lore behind this giant machine built into the mountain and of the larger world around the town, if that even is a thing, really kept me invested. While I would have liked more RPG progression elements, it's really not my place to say it since this is more of a design choice, but if you want a more unique take on the dungeon crawling experience that you cannot get anywhere else, pick up Creature in the Well. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.